Welcome back to the Sports Source. This segment of our program brought to you by Parkside Cabin Rentals. Folks, the best vacation options for you and your family this summer are at Parkside Cabin Rentals. Best options for UT football weekends this fall when everybody's coming in. You want to come down for the game and then spend the rest of your time up in the mountains? Parkside Cabin Rentals. New cabins, new locations to choose from right now. And as always, free parking whenever you go into downtown Gatlinburg. The Ogle family's been doing hospitality in Sevier County since the National Park first opened. They know what they're doing. They're the first name to turn to, ParksideCabinRentals.com. Check them out today. Okay, Tennessee announced uh, a pair, uh, another neutral site game this week. That means two that they've announced since Danny White's been on board. Uh, these games pay you money to play. And that means uh, Syracuse uh, down in Atlanta in 2025, West Virginia in Charlotte. I'm not big on playing West Virginia in Charlotte again, but okay. They're going to pay you to come over there, and that's in 2028. Uh, Vince, I'll start. You've been off the last couple of segments. I'll start with you and just get your take on this. Philip Fulmer flat said, we're not doing the neutral side games. Don't like them. Don't want to give up a home game. Danny White seems to be more in line with, I don't know, 99.9% .9 of all the other athletic directors who are like, you're going to pay me? Okay, let's do it. Uh, your thoughts on that pretty big shift from Fulmer saying no neutral side games to White saying, bring them on. Uh, who's right? Well, I'm fine with it in some years, as long as you don't do that exclusively. You, you have to do home and home with your fan base. So I think if you mix it in every once in a while, every three, four, five years, you want to do a neutral site game and get that marquee time on television and recruiting and everything else, I'm fine with that. But you better beef up those home and home non-conference as well. And I, it looks like it's just going, it's continuing the pattern of one power five, two group of five, one FCS in terms of the four non-conference schedule. I, I, wonder, I wonder and hope that maybe the college football playoff will encourage some of these programs to schedule up. Now, well, Tennessee's I, not in that conversation right now. The big programs already are. They're, you got right. something like, I think Georgia's got Georgia, one with three power five exactly teams coming right. up, which yeah. good for them. Good I love that. Good power five teams. Yeah, right. that's there's terrific. There's bad power five teams right. out there, but Georgia right. didn't right. do that. Yeah, right. I think yeah. that's... That's terrific. Those yeah. schools at Alabama schedules pretty well. Now, yeah. Alabama's one that's pretty much plays a, a neutral site every year. Well, I think mm -hmm. South Carolina has some years, too, where they have two or three. They have multiple really good Power 5 teams, too. So if South Carolina can do it, yeah. I think others can as well. I'd like to see that as an add-on to, to what's already there. Well, let's take a look here at the future non-conference foes for Tennessee that we know of. Okay, so next year, Ball State in Knoxville. You go to Pittsburgh, so that, that flips. Uh, Army coming back, that's cool to play one of the mm -hmm. military. I don't think they've done that since the mid 80s uh, when they played the Air play Force. Army. Was Air Force the last well, I, yeah, yeah, Air Force. Air I'm Force. sorry, early 2000s. I'm thinking Army, Navy, I forgot Air Force. <laughs> they haven't played the Coast Guard in a long time either. <laughs> uh, UT Martin is in there, uh, which, I'm, no offense to UT Martin, I don't care. I don't want those on the game. I know why everybody plays FCS games. I know that everybody says, oh, we do this to spread the money in the state. Yeah, whatever. I don't want those on the schedule. Uh, 22, nobody, who wants to go watch that? 2023, <laughs> you open, or you at least go to BYU. I think that's the opener. Okay, that's not a power five. That's not that great a game. It's not what Tennessee used to play. But that's a unique trip, a different trip you've never made. I'll give you that. They're using it as a power five. Yes, that's my problem with <laughs> yeah. it. But okay, BYU. Austin P. again, care not. Uh, UTSA, they're playing Texas San Antonio. At least that's a different one of these little low trash duds. And then UConn, which is a, uh, eh, you know, okay. You haven't played them either. At least you're giving me something new. You know, don't make me look at the same duds every year. Then you go 2024, you got Oklahoma scheduled to come here, but the 2020 game last year at Norman was canceled due to COVID, so I don't know where this contract rests. Where are you going? Are you, is this still on? Are you going to Oklahoma at some point that we don't know about? Uh, so that one's, I've got question marks by the Oklahoma thing. I haven't heard it canceled, mm, right. but I'm wondering what's happening with that contract. Syracuse and Atlanta, as we mentioned, 2026, you're at Nebraska. 2027, Nebraska comes here. Great. That's fantastic. 2028, West Virginia and Charlotte again. Uh, I was going to say this. You look at 2024 and 2027 specifically. You've got home games all lined up. You don't have any built-in non-conference road games. If I'm Danny White and I've got a fan base that's not been rewarded in a while and I don't know how long this rebuild is going to take. You know, you got Pitt on the road next year. You got LSU on the schedule next year. There's a chance you're worse next year than you are this year. 
I don't know when this, this rebuild is going to finally be over. If I'm Danny White, I do what, what Alabama did a few years ago. I do what Tennessee, it turns out, they did in 1975. I think. And that is give the fans a non-conference trip that they might not normally make and let that be the bowl game. For example, if I'm Danny White right now, I'm looking at scheduling Tulane at Tulane. Why? It's in New Orleans. <laughs> it's in New Orleans. Uh, UNLV, they're playing their games now at Allegiant Stadium. Do you think Vol fans wouldn't like a trip to go see the Death Star and gamble in Vegas? Chuck? Yes. You'd like for them to visit the <laughs> yes. Chuck Casino Casino out there? Uh, who was the other one I had? Uh, UNLV. Hawaii. Uh, oh, Hawaii, Hawaii, of course. Yeah. That's who Alabama scheduled Hawaii. Tennessee played Hawaii in 75. Wound up, they didn't go to a bowl game that year, so that became their bowl game. Mm -hmm. uh, Vince, we were talking here. You had another. You threw out Miami. Yeah. South Florida trip. Now, that's a tougher opponent, but I'm all for playing tougher opponents. I'm assuming I'm trying to keep with their current billing, which is let's find dead opponents. But, it, but the idea is, if you're going to play some of these games, some of these teams, and you don't know when the rebuild's done, reward your fans. Set them up in nice hotels. Take the big boosters out on, a, out on the town in New Orleans, in Las Vegas, in Honolulu, wherever. Is that somebody's mic I'm hearing? Is that my mic? I'm trying. Hang on one second. Is that Vince's mic? Okay. Uh, don't move. <laughs> don't move. Uh, you know, and I anyway, does everybody agree with that, or does everybody disagree with that idea? I, so I, I would say short term, you would want to do something like that to reward the fans. Right. Uh, long term, you can't just assume that you're not, you, you can't wait to start scheduling those after you improve. You need to, you need to project that. And I don't think Tennessee has done enough of that. So I, I think short term, I'd love to do it. I also don't think that they would do something like that. I don't no. think they're, they're thinking that, that, hey, we, you know, we, we let's, let's do one trip to fans. They're thinking from a business standpoint. Oh, they think that all they want. I think they need to do Well, I think it's business if you make your boosters happy. Right. I think if you take yeah. the boosters on a trip and they go, did Alabama fans like the trip too? Oh, absolutely. It was in, a, it was in about 02, give or take. One yeah. of their, the it, on probation. probation. And so they said, well, we're going to schedule Hawaii. They did. The fans went out there. I actually talked to uh, at least one of them that I know that went out there and said they loved it, had a great time out there. Uh, when you first presented that, I wasn't thinking on those terms. I do like the idea of playing Hawaii or playing at UNLV, uh, playing in one of those destinations. When I first saw this, I thought, play Texas. Yeah, I had Texas, That was Texas the team too. I thought of. Oh, sure. And I thought of North Carolina. You know, play them. No, well, they may be too good. I, I'm but I get what you're that. saying. Yeah, yeah the, the venue for the fans. That makes sense. You know, Tennessee Especially fans right would, now, if you're looking at 2024, and I don't know that you're going to be rebuilt at that point. Hope so, but I don't know. That's one where you've got the games to play with. You could do a road game. That's one where let's take them on a trip because we might not be bowling for a year or two here. And I don't know about the bowl destination, but Tennessee fans would love, I think, to see Tennessee and Michigan play again. Oh well, or Tennessee and Florida. You State. had Tennessee and Ohio State yeah. scheduled, and it came right. off the off the. Con that is the easiest trip in the world, and would be perfect. I don't know that Tennessee's ready but, to play Ohio State but right I had, now. I had Texas, you know, playing in yeah, the, the Cowboys Stadium. But yeah. I'm thinking more short term before you rebuild. Right. I don't know if that's a reward for the fans to go get hammered by. Ohio State or Michigan at the moment, but well, if you take them to Tulane and you go and win and you're on Bourbon Street, I think fans would like that. Yeah. Harbaugh could prevent a beating <laughs> well, there. All right, we, we'll be way over, so go. All right, I just don't think they have the mentality. If we're talking about a 6-6 six and six team, possibly this year, I don't think they're thinking, well, we may not be bowl eligible by then. They're thinking bowl eligible now, and then we got to have a winner's mentality. I don't think they would look at it that way. Okay. But it makes too much sense. Well, they should. They All should. right, when we come back, I'm going to change the battery. Or <laughs> Paul is going to change the battery in Vince's mic, and uh, we're going to talk about, ooh, the president of the NCAA said some crazy things this week. We'll discuss that. Come on back. <laughs>